G'day everyone. Um, I've got another short video here for you um, for this injector pump on the R600. Now I've, had, I've just had a few problems with the camera, but um, um, I've got this injector pump fitted, and I'll just just quickly show you a couple of things I did to it. Um, you know, parts I swapped over and that sort of thing. So obviously this isn't the injector pump that came off the truck. This one here is. <clears throat> so, um, I swapped the front housing because this was on the on the pump that I had done up. Uh, this got broken in transit, and um, yeah, it's just rusted and sweated a little bit in inside the bag. It got a bit that way. So, um, you look in there, you see that style of coupling, which is um, Bakelite. Um, that's a little bit later style, probably started about 79 or 80, I reckon, just did a guess. Um, and this one's got the older older style, the, the steel coupling with um, with uh, two two tangs that fit into two female tangs. Um, so, uh, also this puff limiter piston here, uh, the thread was pretty damaged in there, as I explained on the, on the video during the removal. So I put the I put the piston off the other um, off the, the other pump on there, and I just swapped this housing over. So on the inside of that, that's got a bit of a shoulder on it, and obviously that can only be removed once you remove that housing. Um, and there's an O-ring that sits on that, which keeps that tight and keeps it sealed from dust and oil. Um, I've just for the moment I've reused the fittings um, on this new pump here. So. That's your return side, that's your regulator valve, that's your inlet side. Um, it doesn't matter which end you put them on, all that all that body of that pump, it's there's no front, no back as such, it's all, you know, you can hook it up however you like. So that's all that is in, inside it is just it's just an open, it's just a body with um that contains fuel and you can you can put your pressure regulator at either end. So it doesn't matter. <clears throat> um, so I just um, fitted this throttle arm and this stopper arm as well and they were both in good condition spring bracket um, we're going to run with this lift pump see how it goes see how it brings fuel up um, that's the housing off the other pump and that's the puff limiter housing I was telling you about little piston housing um, yeah so We've got that on there ready to go. Um, something I didn't show you beforehand was this hose here. So that's a water hose out of your compressor and it runs behind the fuel pump around to the water pump. So just replace that because it's a bit of a bugger to get to. I cleaned up all that area underneath it. I've got these brackets loose that hold the, that hold the um, support onto the pump. So as you can see, there's two separate brackets. So I've got a bolt together through there. There's a hole there. So I'll do it up tight or snug it, and then I'll tighten up the rest of the bolts so it's got a bit of a little bit of tension on it. It's the main thing. Um, and then I'll set about um, making up some new fuel hoses. But I was going to do that initially, but. I reckon it's going to be easier and neater to do the things while the pump's on there. Um, set my bracket back up to there where I want it. So the, the next little while, what I'm going to do, I'll make the hoses up and I'm going to change those old fuel filters there, get some fresh fuel into it. Um, so when the video starts, where, where I'll probably start it is when I'm doing the spill timing. I did do a spill timing video on the B model, but it wasn't all that comprehensive. So there's a cover there at the front. That one there. And it's got oh, eight bolts, I think, to it. And it just exposes the, the drive coupling at the front of the fuel pump. And um, <clears throat> that's where you can adjust it. So obviously, if you look on that harmonic through the belts there, you can see a 
a white texture mark that I've written on that that I've drawn on that harmonic there. So I'll bring it back to this pointer here. Um, yeah, and then once we've got these bolts loose at the front, we'll set it up to where the pumps um, got fuel up to here, and then where it shuts off um, when the port closes, and, and that's that's where you spill time it. So um, yeah, just just for now, I'll probably leave leave it at, at this for the video and I'll bring it back in when when I've got uh, filters on, hoses done, um, hooked up. I might even I've got to find a little bracket for here. Um, the old pump didn't have one but you can see there's a threaded hole there. It's about quarter UNF or sorry maybe 5 16th UNF with a dowel on there and a right angle bracket goes on there and steps outward and it goes it holds the end of your stopper cable, the sheath, where it pulls that bloke back. So, um, yeah, I just want to I want to get that right. Um, as you can see, the old stopper cable's pretty ordinary. Um, so, just want to get that side of things right, just so that um, so that we give it a fighting chance. Um, it's nothing worse than having to get two feet on the dash either side of the stopper cable and pull it because it's so tight so um, I've got one here that's in pretty good nick it's not a new one but it doesn't look like it's done all that much work and I'm just going to fit it up so yeah I'll get these few things done and yeah I'll come back in with a little bit more comprehensive video of bringing the fuel up and um, and then setting about that spill timing but but yeah so at the moment I've just secured it with the three mounting bolts Got a new gasket in there, and obviously I'll replace the gasket in that in that um, front housing as well. So my next step is to get these tight, where I'm happy with them, and then I'll put my oil fitting back in and have it going to the oil feed for the pump, and um, then I can put put my oil filler on which is a bit of a bugger to get to, but I'll do that. And then once I've done all those things, yeah, I'll be right to right to get some fuel up to it. So I'll have a little bit of a muck around here. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back in in a little while with that, um, with the next video, which will be a little bit more, a little bit more in depth. And, and in the meantime, I'll work out how I can effectively get you in there and show you the front of the, front of the drive coupling. Um, Want to be able to, show you um, again how to bring the fuel up to it so I had a bit of a look at it here earlier <clears throat> um, so this is the one here so it's not overly brilliant to get to but you've got, a, you've got an inlet and an outlet there the outlet is just up behind there so um, these are our threaded ports here so I might be able to find the return there I think might be the easiest um, unless I can just get something into that breather, which might be a little bit easier. It's not a bad idea to have the to have the return hooked up while you're doing it because then you can't really put too much pressure in the system. Um, so yeah, but but that's what I did with the B model. I was um, and just so I can get to it, I might just piss that hose off there and run a hose out here out here and put my regulator outside somewhere where I can easily get to it. And um, That'll make it easier to to um, regulate and and get to and and do it safely, so to speak. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> but anyway, I probably haven't even shown you the truck yet, so I can have a quick look at that while we're going. Pretty decent old truck, uh, 1976 um, R686. Yeah, so 686, or well, the 86 in there is denotes that it's a 285 cool power. Um, yeah, so 44s, it's got 417 diffs, 12 speed overdrive, so it gets along all right. And uh, yeah, we'll just tidy it up a little bit and get it running a bit better and a bit more drivable and see what the brother wants to do with it after that. But uh, yeah, otherwise, pretty good bones, I reckon, like a good starting project. <clears throat> but yeah, 
anyway. Let's quickly show you inside. Yeah. Not bad in the interior, a little bit of a, a break in the dash there where they used to go a bit, but uh, we'll still do. Um, as you can see, 12 speed with the second stick. Fairly original inside, just wants a little bit of love, but, but otherwise it'll clean up pretty well, so. Um, pretty good thing. Um, this was a sleeper cab made in Australia by Cummings Industries. So they're a, a steel cab with a fiberglass roof or a moss roof, if, um, if you look at this example. Um, some of them did have the air start tank inside that um, back lid, but yeah, this one's been fitted to the chassis. Um, <clears throat> used to belong to a company up at Lithgow in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales and they used to cart coal with it. Um, that's who owned it from new. And then it's had a bit of blue on there, or a fair bit of blue. And the green, white and yellow is the last paint job. So I've just given it a little bit of a buff there on the cab door and the air cleaner. So I'll do the rest of this um, sleeper cab once I've got the engine running right. And yeah, give that interior a bit of a clean up and we'll be right to rock and roll. But yeah, just for the moment, we'll concentrate on getting this injector pump tidied up. What I might do also, I've got some tappet cover gaskets here, so I might just peel the lids off it and just run through those valve clearances as well and reseal the, the lid gaskets and just have a bit of a look around the top end of it. So, um, yeah, but anyway, um, that'll probably just about do for today's video. Um, or for now anyway, until I get this injector pump ready to time. Um, <clears throat> main thing is to remember, don't be too worried if you're slightly out on your harmonic balancer. Uh, like I say, you, sometimes because they're a bit of a bit of a bugger to fit up, you want the the roll pin or the dowel on this style of coupling or on this style of coupling here. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but there's a tooth missing in there. So that that um, <clears throat> on your later model one that fits over a tooth with a roll pin through it. So you can't, you can't put them on the wrong way. And it's a bit the same with these old ones. They're a little bit of a different style. <clears throat> um, but they've got a roll pin in the bottom. You can't really stuff it up. And if you put that roll pin to the bottom, which is pretty close to top dead center on your, on your harmonic balancer, it's probably the easiest point to put it in. Um, let's see if I've got an old one over here that I can just show you that coupling. There might be an old rusty one here somewhere. Yeah, so, so don't be too worried about... about um, see that there. Right. That's the style that, <clears throat> that this particular truck's got that I'm working on. And you can see that roll pin there. Um, So it goes into there. So you really you can really only put it on one way. So yeah, don't don't get too worried if you're a little bit out on your harmonic and you're not quite sure what you're doing there. As long as you can get the thing to line up and you can you can get your pump sitting in into the home position without pulling it in with bolts. You never want to do that because you'll break that housing, like that one over there I showed you. So you get it sitting in there, snugged up nicely. <clears throat> You can then take off your your um, cover here, and that'll expose your your um, your three well, your four bolts in there, which are on slotted holes, and you can spin that thing around till the cows come home. Um, yeah, you can put it wherever you want to, um, and line your pump up with wherever you want to. So, so don't be too stressed if if initially your marks don't line up 100%. So, um, but anyway. I will show you a little bit more about that when I'm ready to time it. So, um, yeah, they're, they're sort of, they're not, not rocket science, they you just got to, um, yeah, just work through the basics really, and most inline pumps are the same um, throughout different makes and models. Um, 
Yeah, so anyway, <clears throat> I reckon that should do for now and um, we'll be back a little bit later on with a, with a little bit more progress for you. Make up a couple of hoses, I just do them myself. Um, I've got a roll of material there and I just spin these ends on them and you can just make them your own length and you can put them wherever you, ever you want to and make a half decent job of it, that's the main thing. Um, here, like I said, replace these fuel filters here and um, get a bit of fuel across and through the filters and up into it and, and we'll be right to do the next phase of the job. Alrighty, that'll probably do for now. I've said that about 15 times, so I'll sign off now and um, yeah, I'll be back with another video later on.